I have to respect Garcia's power, man, you know? Uh, you know, we both were commentating that fight, and I just remember um, how, how happy Danny was when the fight was over. When the fight was over, Danny's like, yo, EJ took way too many shots. Let me hit him. You're going to let Sean hit you like that? Man, only if Sean could crack an egg, man, that fight wouldn't have been what it was. Hey, it's the Empire, Geo Boxing Empire, and Baxter Boxing. Now, man, you guys heard Sean Porter talk about the uh, Spence Porter fight, man. Uh, when Spence and Porter were fighting each other, Keith one time Thurman and Danny Garcia were both commentating on the fight, and Danny Garcia told Keith Thurman what, how he felt about that fight, man, about uh, Errol Spence and Sean Porter. And he was saying, man, Errol Spence is getting hit way too much, way too much, and you know, if he gets hit by a, a power puncher like me, well, a Errol Spence is going to sleep. He's going to sleep. That's what that's what Keith one time Thurman said. Danny told him, and this is a really big deal because they did commentate the fight, and this was a meaningful fight as far as them both commentating because these are mutual opponents, right? Um, you know, a lot of fighters always say that you know, oh, who's that guy? I've never seen him before when they're uh, talking about their rivals, but you know danny garcia and keith thurman they're different kind of animals man they love the sport of boxing and they actually study the sport of boxing because when they talk about it uh during their commentary it's really in depth and really just elusive on how they say what the point needs to do to break someone down danny garcia believes he can hurt aj not only hurt him but stop him you know danny garcia has really been um one of the best counter punchers around the 140 and 147 division at the highest level because he's countering you with hooks and it's extremely hard when someone's throwing a jab and straight right to counter someone with a hook because most of the time if you're fighting an elite level opponent some they're not standing right in front of you the highest level fighters are using angles they're moving around the ring yeah they're using head movement but danny always finds the way to hit you now, Danny may have not win all of his top fights like Sean Porter or Keith one time Thurman, but he did land punches in that fight that um, that rocked at least it rocked him for a split se uh, a split second. Right. It may not have been like it was the fight was going to be over, but he definitely hit Sean Porter with some shots that made Sean Porter respect Danny. And same thing with Keith one time Thurman. Um, the problem with Danny Garcia is he's just he'll challenge one bomb and then keep it moving. You know, um, Danny Garcia has to be wary of looking for that perfect shot, uh, as they say in boxing, and just let his hands go. Um, I do think that uh, Errol Spence is fighting one of the hardest punches he ever fought in the division by fighting a Danny Garcia because Sean Porter, while he's an aggressive fighter, when you're throwing, you know, close to 100 punches around, that's going to take some of your stamina away. Uh, Danny Garcia is very precise with his punches. It, it, it's wild because. The very thing that can make Danny win the fight can be his downfall as well. And Danny Garcia, he really conserves his energy. So when he hits you with that perfect shot, right, quote unquote, it's more of a 100% shot uh, as far as his stamina goes. Because if you're throwing a lot of punches around, you're, you're most likely going to get more tired than if you pick and choose your perfect shots and you land and clean, right? It's, it's going to do more damage, right? Um, Danny Garcia reminds me of a, a Broner in his prime as far as his volume activity and what Broner used to do in his prime was he, he'll basically pick and choose his shots up until like round five and then he'll start letting his hands go and what that does is um, his opponents will basically think they're winning the fight throw a lot of punches think they got all these rounds in the bank but by the time Adrian Broner lets his hands go um, it's halfway if not more than halfway through the fight uh, Broner still at 100% stamina wise because he wasn't doing much right and when you get hit with a, a, a by anyone who's 100 percent and it's halfway through the fight or more that punch is going to feel heavier than what it really is you know that, that punch is going to feel a lot heavier than what it really is because it's halfway through the fight you've been trying even when you've been thinking winning his rounds you've been throwing a lot of punches hitting this guy and he's been sitting there pot shotting you every now and then but then you know he starts turning up later in the fight and those shots are going to feel extremely heavy because he hasn't been doing anything i.e he's 100 percent and you're like 70 percent right so, you know, Danny Garcia, we're going to see how he approaches this my, uh, Errol Spence Jr. fight. But he does feel like he does get hit too much. And I agree, man. I think Errol Spence Jr. did take a lot of hits in that Sean Porter fight. A lot of people had it uh, 
going either way. A lot of people thought uh, Chan did enough to win that um, Earl Spence Jr. fight, but the the one main difference in that fight was the knockdown that uh, Sean Porter suffered in the fight, right? Uh, Errol Spence Jr. threw a left hook that dropped Sean Porter. But this is a really big deal, man. Um, Sean Porter, um, phenomenal fighter, you know, gave some real snippets and chinks in Errol Spence's armor as far as his defense goes. And Keith one time Thurman and Danny Garcia, they're plotting on him. They're planning on Errol Spence, man. They're plotting on him. They're trying to, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they're trying to say hey man what's this guy's weakness oh he gets hit too much oh this oh that believe me man uh keith and one time thurman and danny garcia they're bouncing ideas off each other to get this dub in this fight because everyone's gonna have to see everyone in welterweight division man these are facts man these top fires they will gonna have they're gonna have to fight each other eventually and danny garcia and er keith and one time thurman you know errol spence is a common enemy a common foe now it's wild man keith thurman did try to be uh, I guess balance and give both perspectives. He thought that Errol Spence could uh, just box him on the outside, make it an easy night. But you know, in my opinion, Errol Spence Jr. is not that kind of guy. He did it one time against the Mikey Garcia fight, but for the most part, he's pressuring you. And if he pressures Danny enough, is that a good thing? Do you really want to be close to a, a power puncher who counters you and is waiting for a counter power punch, which is basically the highest? Uh, technical ability you can get in boxing not only is he hitting with the power punch but it's a counter power punch then you guys see is extremely dangerous and if you start fighting him in the trenches this can be a war um we'll see what uh Errol Spence jr does but you know what they say in boxing uh never fight another man's game and while it's wild because Errol Spence jr's game is dangerous game as well fighting in the inside fighting in the pocket so you know this can go sideways either way you look at it for either fighter because it's their bread and butter they're, they're both gonna do their both attributes are is fighting in the inside and that's their bread and butter so if it gets a pro close proximity fight this can this can go either way man this can go either way uh let me know how you guys feel about keith Thurman's comments though man i thought it was pretty interesting stuff let me know how you guys feel about it though i'll link the video in the description like comment subscribe it's the empire jew boxing empire